So, the, the challenge we are having, all maybe not only is in for us, it is all for other countries as well, that we are having vaccine one after another, but still we are having the disease burden. Um, the problem, the similar kind of, um, I mean, similar kind of disease can be caused by different etiological agents. So there could, there is a possibility of misunderstanding or underestimation of the impact of vaccine. Let me give you one example. We are having pneumococcal vaccine, and which is more known as pneumonia vaccine. And we are seeing very, very visible impact of pneumococcal vaccine. But that doesn't mean that pneumonia will go. So there is a possibility that people may misunderstood us or people may undermine us or undermine our decision. So, and our, this is one. So we need to make it very clear. This is the time that we should generate more evidence and we should make it very clear. We should be very straightforward with our stakeholders because they depend on our data, right? Right. And, and if, if they are not, if we are not very explicit in our um, statements, then they may misunderstand us, and which can be a problem in future vaccines, number one. And number two, also our, we should convince our stakeholders and tell them very clearly that vaccines until now, we always talked about the deaths, and which that was MDG era. But now it is more of SDG where where if you consider HDG3, it is made of very important well-being. So it is not only really how many deaths are prevented. If you can prevent hospitalization, that's also a huge impact. So so these, some of the new vaccines which are coming, and typhoid is one of them, but I can tell you a few other vaccines are in the pipeline, which will be really significantly reducing the hospitalization. So hospitalization has overall impact on the health system. And this health system is really impacts on the overall well-being of the children and overall society impact on the society. Let me give you one specific example. In these, in the hospital of our country or any other low middle income countries, there is a fierce competition for the bed. And if you have a fierce competition on the bed, that means you are refusing those babies when the beds are full. And honestly, most of the beds are full by the afternoon. And in the evening time, most of the CGR cases are coming. And you are saying, so if you need admission, but we do not have any bed at this point. Mm -hmm. But just think about this. How that is going to work? And then, and then, then you are maybe preventing a hospitalization. A simple hospitalization for a very mild disease. For example, Rotavirus diarrhea. Mm -hmm. we, we, we may know that rotavirus diarrhea, so we may know that, okay, rotavirus diarrhea is not causing any death. Very minimum mm -hmm. diarrheal death now in Bangladesh. Yes. But your rotaviral diarrhea cases, they are being there, they will be there in your hospital maybe for only 24 hours, but they are occupying the bed, a significant number of beds. And when mm -hmm. they are occupied, the beds are occupied, the next meningitis case, who mm -hmm. needs admission at that particular point are getting refused. Mm -hmm. And then again, a case of the birth asphyxia or premature premature birth, mm -hmm. that babies are referred from another hospital to Sakashishu Hospital, they're getting refused. So if we can prevent these diseases, then it will be a big achievement for us. Yeah, I it, think has, it has the impact on other diseases. Yes, impact on other diseases who are really causing deaths and disabilities. So you should not really look at the vaccine only for that particular vaccine. It can really help others. The other possible, the highest possible disease in 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 the hospital and also the outpatient department is typhoid. So mm -hmm. if you look at the blood culture isolates, seventy five percent of all blood culture isolates among the children are some other types of paratypes. So they are typhoid cases, right? Typhoid mm. paratypes cases. If you can prevent them, you can really, you may, not only you'll be making the beds available and allowing the other severe children to get admitted, you'll be improving your outpatient service. Because if you look at the publications, which was also there in the BBC news, 
that in Bangladesh and many other countries, the average time for, for a patient in the outpatient department is a long waiting time, but the visit time is four minutes. This is very minimum. If we can really improve these cases who are really treated in outpatient department, for example, typhoid, we'll be not only making the beds vacant and getting the other severe children to go there, we'll be improving the overall health system by reducing that, uh, the increasing the time available of the physicians for the specific patients. So it, it, we need to go to that level now. It is, it is a time now. Bangladesh is not only economically progressing, Bangladesh health system also should go as in the same way. And we all need to discuss about this more and more in the group so that we can really bring, make our state stakeholders more convincing. Um, we, we can convince our stakeholders and help them to make the right decision at this point. Are you okay with this? Uh, but uh, I, I have uh, two questions. Uh, yes, please, two, please. two scenarios. Uh, like the country uh, where there is severe resource constraint and where the government uh, needs to prioritize um, uh, with their um, monetary allocation and mm-hmm. availability mm-hmm. of the vaccine, funding agency, and so many other factors are working. Mm-hmm. So how the policymakers uh, should calculate which vaccine should give priority? For example, if uh, in, in a country where uh, pneumococcal vaccine is not yet introduced, and if you are considering also typhoid, although they have the uh, shadow impact on uh, pneumococcal mm-hmm. cases, uh, how the policymakers should get their own alibi or own uh, logic? I will say any country who has not introduced pneumococcal vaccine, mm-hmm. they, uh, but and neither pneumococcus nor typhoid, I'll say they should go for pneumococcal vaccine first because that will be saving huge number of lives and then also at the same time um, death and disability and everything. The anti-fired vaccine in that case, for example, in many countries, what you can, so typhoid is a very new vaccine now. We mm-hmm. still do not know what will be the policy, neither even Gabby. Yeah. The reason we may decide that Type of vaccine should remain only in this population of the country, not everywhere. Mm-hmm. For example, Bangladesh may decide, oh, well, let's, let's introduce typhoid vaccine in Dhaka city only, as India did. They are giving in Delhi, mm-hmm. and they are giving it in Mumbai. Mm-hmm. So that's the place we are giving. So that mm-hmm. we options. You know. So, I mean, you are exactly right. This question should come, and then we should discuss among ourselves and make our decisions that wow, where we should invest. And then, for example, if this is the case in typhoid, we may be limit our typhoid vaccine to the urban population. Okay. I mean, it depends, but it is, it is, it is, it is just, just we are thinking about this, but we know, do not have much data from the rural area. So we should have that data from the rural area as well. Okay, and in uh, another scenario, like in Bangladesh, where mm-hmm. we already have HIV vaccine, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, and now we are on the verge of introducing rotaviral vaccine and typhoid vaccine. These are in the pipeline. So, mm-hmm. uh, how the uh, uh, public health professionals should prioritize? What's your opinion? Which vaccine should come on top of other? We are already HIV and HIMO vaccine, mm-hmm. but I, I, I believe what a virus will be coming mm-hmm. by early next year. And if we start working for typhoid, it will be coming at a different, maybe other, another 2020, not before that, number one. Mm-hmm. And number two, we don't think that it will be in the same schedule, number one. And number two, it will be much, much cheaper than other vaccine also. So, I think we need to make the decision now about the vaccine, and then we can work on it. What should be the dose? What should be the time of this injection? Um, the vaccination? Uh, should the why inside? I mean, the, the, the challenge I'm facing now, Bangladesh, uh, we all are facing now, Bangladesh is really making very good progress. And Bangladesh possibly will be going to a level where we will be ineligible. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be not eligible anymore uh, for sorry for any Gabi money. Yeah. And if you do not get the Gabi money, then we'll be facing the problem. You just think about Indonesia and Philippines. 
Mm. They are not really very rich. Yes, but, but they are marginally not... middle income country. Marginally. <laughs> and unfortunately, they, they, they cannot really buy the vaccine. Think about you to go to that situation. So if we buy now, we will be done. And then, let us take maybe another one year or so. And then I also have a challenge. There is a question about the typhoid vaccine. But because you know that typhoid study is going on in 13 different countries. And, and we now know in many African countries are also having a huge typhoid pattern, which we were not knowing before. So they are also looking for a vaccine. So, okay. and everybody wants to get the vaccine before they are becoming uneligible for, um, for but heavy money. I, I think in that case, uh, the countries like India who are producing vaccine at a very low cost uh, locally uh, by their own pharmaceutical agencies. Uh, so how that option uh, is not working in other countries. For example, uh, India can purchase a vaccine from Bharat Biotech. But if uh, yeah. when Bangladesh will be non-eligible for Gavi funding, how they will make a choice that where from where sh- they should uh, buy vaccine for the uh, population of Bangladesh? I mean, I, I, I think it will be a big challenge because this vaccine is not really expensive. I, I do not think that we will be negotiating the price hmm. because biotech should be very, very meaningful. But if we are not as eligible, then we have to go take that price whatever uh, biotech is now selling. Only selling the vaccine and to Pakistan. Because Pakistan is getting the vaccine even pre qualification. Mm-hmm. So, it, it, so, there are lots of questions still you need to answer a lot. Yeah, but is there any, uh, uh, any bar to produce the vaccine locally? Uh, like if any pharmaceutical. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. There is no bar. I mean, they are expecting inceptors, men is coming everywhere because people are expecting that inceptors will be going maybe between the cholera. Mm-hmm. And I have very minimum knowledge about cholera. I have no comment about that, but I believe um, that's why conjugate vaccine would be a bigger, bigger priority. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To me, okay. the cholera vaccine can be stopped by vaccine. Okay. So the overall scenario is changing uh, depending on the socioeconomic status of the countries and yes. the population it needs, availability, funding, and other issues. So, um, well, I mean, the things are changing because of the disease process is changing. You have four pneumonia cases, you have less pneumonia cases, you have pneumonia cases for one meteorological agent. We have now pneumonia for different geological agents. So things are becoming complex and that has that will be having relation with the antimicrobial resistance of the world. Mm. Because you know giving vaccine against all the bacteria, but you are having the viral pneumonia. But if you do not really understand that we'll continue to use antibiotics which will be having an impact on the antimicrobial resistance. So we, ha- we are going to be coming, gradually going to a very complex situation, but we'll be overcoming this because this is this is the thing we are doing it for good, but we also should, we should also prepare ourselves to mm-hmm. understand this and 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 act accordingly. Yeah, I think that, that uh, complex situation will lead us to take another innovative decision for the policy makers yes. of the country. Yes, it is not one. I mean, think about this. How many, how many days, how many months, years it took to get this his vaccine and more complex than the Mococca vaccine, right? Yes. So, and now you are going to another phase that, so you have to decide again. Yeah, these are people are understanding this challenge, and gradually, I believe, we'll be reaching there. And thank you so much for raising these issues, because more you talk about this, more uh, people will be taking interest on in it.